Senator, good morning. What do you make of a second referendum? Have you got to be kidding me? They're up here in power for nine years. Nine years. Just another thing they can put on their list that they didn't get done. I find this absolutely bizarre. And here he is, gobbing off out there. And once again, where's your detail, mate? Before you start coming and saying you're going to do something, how about you're going at the other side, the red team over here, and to asking them where the detail is, but you come out make some absurd comment yesterday, absolutely idiotic of him. I just... This absolutely blows me away this morning. I can tell you that much. Yet has no detail. Has no detail, but had nine years, nine years between the Liberal National Party and themselves to get something done, and they did absolutely nothing. And you want to trust Peter Dutton in the future to get this done? Oh, please, Australians. I'll tell you what, it's absolute rubbish up here this morning. And while we're on it, I want to say this to the Labor Party. You're just as bad when it comes to selling stuff. And you know why? Because you end up buying your goddamn political seats instead of going out there and earning them and selling yourself. And this is where you are coming unstuck. You are doing a rotten job of selling the voice and you're going to get a slap for it this morning. Because when it goes down, and at this stage it looks like it's going to go down, the only people to blame, if you think you can walk away from this and leave all that unintended hurt that it's going to leave behind, I tell you, I'm going to be holding you personally responsible. So get out there and start selling this property. Get your voices out there and start doing this because I tell you what, if this goes down, a lot of people are going to get hurt. And the other thing is, if Peter Dutton thinks he can come through like someone on a white horse in two years' time and actually try and pull this off again after all the hurt, if it doesn't get past the through first time, you're kidding yourself, Dutts. You're absolutely kidding yourself. Uh, do you think, Senator, it's also a case that many Australians are tired of hearing about it? I mean, we're in the midst of a cost of living crisis. People are generally concerned about their own pockets right now. Has the voice debate become tiresome before it has even really ramped up? I don't think it's only just become twice. And once again, they can't sell anything up here, even if it was Tupperware that was liquidated, they couldn't sell it. That is the problem that they, they have up here. And you are right, the cost of living. People are out there. I mean, I'm in a supermarket. I had a very irate man uh, going at me in the supermarket. And I don't blame him. He wasn't going at me personally, but he was really, really angry. And he's not the only one I've seen the last few weeks. They are really feeling the heat, a lot of Australians out there. You know, it's like he said, he said, I can't even put food on the table for my two sons. That is where we're at right now in this country. And it is really, I can tell you, that is what everybody is talking about. They're, and they're also talking about is interest rates going to go up again. Nobody on the street is talking to me about the voice. And I'm sorry if that hurts people out there this morning, but that's just where we're at in the argument because people are really feeling the cost of living out there and they're worrying about whether or not they can keep a roof over the head, whether or not they can afford to go to the doctor, you know, whether or not they can put milk, provide milk in the morning for cereal. That's what they're talking to me about. Mm. Well, look, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting between now and October 14. What's your reaction to John Farnham's song being used in support of The Voice? Oh, look, um, it, I think it'll be very interesting to see what other songs are going to come out. Um, look, congratulations, John Farman, for um, handing that over for them to use. Um, that was very, very big of him um, and I'm quite sure um, was very generous um, and, and good on him. I, I don't really have much else to say about that. Obviously, mm. many of us, especially our age, uh, know that song quite well. Um, I did see the ad run through last night. I thought the ad was done... Um, quite well as well. So I guess we'll just see I see I guess we'll just see where it ends. But once again we're six weeks out and either they've worn people out or they've left their run too late. But I guess we'll depict that after the vote's taken. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well not long to go now. Let's move on now to airlines in Australia. Qantas being investigated by the ACCC, of course the blocking of the Qatar flights. How big of a mess is Qantas in firstly, do you think? Well, that depends on whether the ACCC is actually going to take any action because it's, you know, not known for doing that that well. Um, so that's the other problem you have and whether or not the ACCC will step in and, and get heavy-handed with them. And if that needs to be done, it's about time the ACCC showed that side of themselves and went in heavy-handed and went hard at Qantas that's, if that's what needs to be done. Uh, the other thing is with Qatar is, uh, you know, I'm still... I've still got to talk to people over the next through it, next two or three days. I just want to make sure that it's not going to have an effect 
a negative effect on the do smaller domestic airlines that we ha now have flying around Australia. I would hate to see them being wiped out if this thing builds bigger and they start doing domestic flights. So I just want to talk to the people like Sharp Airlines, Rex Airlines, uh, uh, is a uh, Bonza, Bonza mm. I think that's fairly new in the market. Yeah. I just want to be able to talk to them. Uh, because this was only sort of brought up last week and we got 14 trenches of legislation thrown at us on Thursday. It's been a pretty heavy weekend, so I do apologise for that, but I will be meeting with the executives of those airlines over the next few days, or at least speaking to them by phone, to get my head around this and, hear, and listen to what they have to say. All right, just quickly, we're running out of time. Before we let you go, do you support more Qatar flights coming to Australia? What's your position on that? Um, well, once again, I'm just not 100% sure because I'm just not sure what the unintended consequences are, if there are any, um, to the domestic airlines here. And I just want to make sure that they're comfortable with that uh, before I come out and say anything further. That would be me doing my due diligence and making sure I'm doing the right thing and listening to all sides of the argument. OK, fair enough. Senator Jackie Lambie, good to speak with you as always. Thank you for joining us this morning.